What's up guys? Welcome back to Deck Tech for Decks. I'm your host Caleb. If you guys want to support the channel, you can click on that whatnot link in the description down below. Not only will you get $15 to spend whenever you sign up, but additionally you'll be helping the channel when you do that. You could also join the Patreon. Not only will you be supporting the channel, but again you will get to vote weekly on the weekly voted patron Deck Tech. Special shout out to my high contributing patrons, Newsome, you rock. Now, let's get into today's deck tech with Tae Wakin. And guys, this girl's super unique. I'm probably going to even build two different decks of her, so keep your eye out for that. But this one's going to be a storm build. Now, this girl has very flexible abilities, and honestly, card advantage in the command zone is super useful, especially when it's mass card advantage. I mean, we could fire off something like in the festivities, kill all the one drops, and then draw a ton of cards. And then that second ability, super busted. We can just cast a mana geyser and then shove let upwards to 25 mana into that ability tap her and then now every time we grape shot someone they're taking 25 damage yeah this is just going to be a very powerful storm build and a very powerful boros control deck right because this girl comes down easy we're playing a lot of spells that deal one damage to creatures but we're able to pump those spells up and then those spells replace themselves so now all of our burn spells can turn into cantrips which is extremely powerful and then by the time we get to the late game and we generate a ton of mana it's going to be too late for our opponents to bounce back now some of the best cards in this deck are going to be your or Urbrasks, your burgies and your storm kiln artists right every time we're casting spells we're generating mana and this is just going to allow us to keep casting spells even uh the virtue of courage is insane in this deck since we are doing a ton of damage to our opponents this can just result in us drawing all the cards we need to win the game on the spot so if that sounds like a deck tech you want to get into Let's get into it. Let's kick it off by talking about the bread and butter of this deck, the one mana ping spells. Remember, this is a Boros control list, so the goal of this deck is to play your commander ASAP and then literally just ping off all of your opponent's threats. This is going to be pretty oppressive to play against if you're in a creature meta. Shower of Sparks, Spikeful Hazard, Geist Flame, all very good early game cards. One drops are just going to get hated off of these boards immediately, and we're going to get card advantage off of it. Gut shot, flame jab, needle drop, again, very useful cards. We even have more flexible ones that can take out up to two creatures at once, drawing us even more cards. Dual shot, Chandra's pyro helix, twin bolt, and forked bolt all can take out two creatures at once. From there, we're running a ton of cards that deal one damage to all of our opponent's creatures. Not only are these going to be amazing board wipes, but additionally, we can draw a ton of cards off of these. Just make sure if the board's filled with a lot of 3-3s, three tap your commander for 2, and now all of your 1 damage spells deal 3 damage, and that's going to draw you a ton of cards. Scouring Sands, Boiling Earth, Electricery, we have Blazing Volley, Tectonic Hazard, In the Festivities, just amazing one-sided cards that are going to be extremely oppressive for our opponents to deal with. We're running Grape Shot as well. This is going to be very flexible early game to take out some one drops to draw some cards, and then late game it becomes a very powerful game ender. Smoldering Egg is going to be pretty insane when we turn it into the Ashmouth Dragon. This can ping down a lot of our opponent's creatures and just start pinging them in the face. Aurelia's Fury is kind of a messed up card in this deck. Not only can it be incredibly useful card advantage, but additionally it does have that broken silence effect tied to it, so it's an incredibly powerful control piece in this deck. Jaya's Immolating Inferno, this can draw us up to 3 cards, or we can just ping our opponents for a ton of mana. There's a couple reasons we'd want to do that. If we have Virtue of Courage on the battlefield, or maybe Neheb, it can be a lot of mana or a lot of cards. Heart Flame Duelist also seemed like a no-brainer. Not only is it a damage spell, but additionally it can give all of our instant and sorcery spells lifelink. That's going to be incredibly funny come late game. Lightning Bolt, just the classic here. We have Spiteful Banditry. It's going to be very easy to trigger this very consistently and get a ton of treasure tokens off of it. Virtue of Courage, again, this is probably one of the best cards in the deck. Late game, this can draw a good portion of your library, and as long as you have a Burgi or a Storm Kiln Artist on the battlefield, you could be looking at a win right then and there. Kara is kind of a worse Virtue of Courage, but in a pinch, she'll do good, and then she does also have that ping effect that synergizes pretty good with our commander. Goblin Sharpshooter does a couple very useful things in the deck. One, it's just going to give us insane card advantage whenever our opponents play any one drop. Additionally, we are on Young Pyromancer, so anytime we cast a sorcery spell, we can go ahead and eat that Young Pyromancer token and then draw a card if Goblin
goblin sharpshooter and our commander are on the battlefield. And then the last very useful thing about this is we can just wipe the entire board with this. I mean, literally, if we tap our commander for four mana, this is dealing five damage to any creature that can very easily take an entire board out. Moving on to the storm aspect of the build, we have a lot of rituals. Jessica's will is going to be one of the best ones. From there, we have desperate ritual, seething song, pyretic ritual, mana geyser. It's not uncommon to get upwards to 15 to 20 mana off of mana geyser, especially turn five where everybody else is ramping. Very easy. Everybody taps out in casual, so this is definitely going to abuse that fact. Neheb the Eternal, not really a ritual, but it is kind of in this deck since we are dealing a lot of direct damage to our opponents. Smothering Tithe, again, not a ritual, but just produces a ton of mana. Bonus round. This is probably one of the best cards in the deck. It's going to double up on our rituals, double up on all our damage, double up on all our card advantage. You're definitely going to want to play this card the turn you're trying to win the game. Bergy, extremely useful in any storm build. Additionally, we can use the backside of Bergy. Now, not as common, but if we already have a storm kiln artist on the battlefield and we need more cards, I could definitely see us casting the horn. Storm Kiln Artist, Runaway Steamkin, Treasonous Ogre, all very good cards to generate a ton of mana out of thin air. Urbrask is also going to be one of the best cards in the deck because not only does it have that broken front side, but you flip this thing over, it'll axe out one of our opponent's board states, it's going to generate some treasure tokens, and then it's going to allow us to cast all instant and sorcery spells from any graveyard. What's so good about this is Urbrask will actually flip over while you have that ability, so this can be an insane turn that can cause you to win the game. From there, we're going to have a lot of ping effects. And remember, our ping effects are going to be insane due to our commander being on the battlefield and her allowing them to do additional damage. Thermo Alchemist, Kessing Flame Breather, Erebor Flame Smith, Electrostatic Field, Firebrand Archer, Gutter Snipe. Again, whenever we tap our commander for even four, these are dealing like five damage to someone's face. Every time we cast an instant or sorcery spell, that is going to end the game very quickly. Unexpected Windfall, Big Score, Seize the Day. I really love these spells and storm builds. They draw you cards while replacing a little bit of the mana you use to cast them. Faithless Looting, Light Up the Stage, just solid cards to rifle through your deck. Wheel of Misfortune, again, we do have a lot of ways to utilize our graveyard in this deck, so filling it up is not a bad idea, and then getting a fresh new grip is also pretty solid. Past in Flames and Underworld Breach are two more ways we can access our graveyard. Past in Flames especially can honestly win you the game on the spot if you have the right cards in your graveyard. Battle Mage's Bracers and Illusionist Bracers. Our commander does have an activated ability so doubling up on that is not going to be a bad idea now whenever we tap her for four all our spells are going to deal an additional eight damage that's going to be insane Zerzoth chaos rider was one of the cards that inspired me to build a token version of this girl but it was so good that i couldn't exclude it from the storm build what's going to happen is you're going to get three devils essentially every time it's your turn and then whenever anybody else wants to draw a card on anybody else's turn you're also going to get a devil and then we can start pinging those devils down those devils can ping themselves down and it's just going to result in you drawing a ton of cards our strategy is heavily reliant on our commander, so we do want to protect her. We have Swift of Boots, Lightning Greaves, Apostle's Blessing, Shelter, and Sejiri Shelter. Young Pyromancer is also going to make an appearance in this deck along with the Kamigawa Lands. Now, the goal of these cards is just to make a lot of 1-1s. One that way we can kill them with our Grape Shot effects to draw a lot of cards in the early game. We are on Gamble as well. Really good to get us past in flames because, again, we really don't care if we accidentally discard past in flames and it is one of those cards that we need to end the game. Tibble's Trickery for some added protection. We have Wear and Tear for some solid removal. Talisman of Conviction, Arcane Signet, Soul Ring for some early game ramp. And that's going to do it for the deck tech, guys. Remember, keep your eye out for that token build. It is on the way. With that being said, I would like to thank my patrons. Newsom, Excessum, Chicken Salad, Creator. You guys are amazing. Really keep the channel going. I couldn't appreciate it enough. With that being said, I hope this helped you in your deck building endeavors. And I will see you in the next one.